Welcome back to Tech Talks. I'm Chris Bormas, and at Tech Talks, a lot of the times we're talking about troubleshooting and trying to fix problems. Well, today I want to take a step back and let's talk about something we can do to hopefully eliminate some of those problems that come up. One of the key calls we get is related to implant placement and overdenture studs. So where do we want to place our implants for the best results? And before we do that, there's a couple things we need to take a look at. Obviously, we want to take a look at the type, quality, and quantity of bone. Where can we place our implants? Number two, we want to take a look at patient financing. Are they going to be able to afford, and do they want to have two, three, or four more implants down the line to have something fixed. And third, we need to take a look at the prosthetic wax up to see where we have our prosthetic room for our components. So with this in mind, when we take a look at where we're placing implants, I'm going to give you an example of three different uh, areas we see implants placed. Now, the first placement right here is quite popular but there's a major drawback to it. When you place here in the bicuspid area, you have both an anterior and a posterior cantilever. We call this a pure abutment because you're always going to have something functioning off. It's like a teeter-totter. When we think about relines, traditionally we're thinking about the posterior saddle area, replacing acrylic to compensate for lost bone and tissue. But when we have this pure abutment, we have both an anterior and a posterior area to reline, which is extremely difficult. Now, this is an area I would not place in. Now, the two most popular areas to place implants, here's type two, which is placing them in the canine area. Most of the time, we have the most prosthetic room here in the canine area. We have room for our stud attachment housings. We think about a locator, one of the things we often think about is vertical height. But what we often need to think about and why we want to do our prosthetic wax up is we are looking for the buccal lingual measurements. We want to make sure we have a thickness of acrylic to mask our prosthetic components. So when you take a look at a locator with a five and a half millimeter wide housing, a clicks with a four millimeter wide housing, we need to make sure we have the prosthetic space to provide the aesthetics the patient demands. So the good news about the canine area, we have a great posterior cantilever we have a minimal, very minimal anterior cantilever depending upon the shape of the jaw and we have room for prosthetic space. However, there's also the third position which is more anterior to the canines in the lateral position. Now, there's a positive and negative to this. The positive is that we have one movement. It's an anterior to posterior cantilever movement. The other major positive, and this is where we want to find out if the patient is going to be placing implants down the line, is that if we're going to be placing two implants later and convert the patient to something fixed, we've got a fantastic AP spread going from lateral to bicuspid. Think of the difference in AP spread between lateral to bicuspid and canine to bicuspid. With this improved AP spread, we can have both posterior teeth on our fixed prosthesis. So again, we can place our implants in the lateral area. Drawback to that, you have reduced prosthetic space. So again, that's where that wax setup and try and comes in. So my recommendations, if the patient is not going to have implants placed down the line, let's take a look at the canine. If the implant is, uh, the patient is going to have more implants placed down the line, let's take a look at the lateral area. And please don't place the implants in the bicuspid area because that's when they call preet and they say the patient's not happy. Questions, comments, just let us know. Thank you for being here with Tech Talks today. Have a great one.